This is the story about a saint who was completely absorbed in the love of Krishna. His reality was Vrindavan. He was immersed in the leelas of Radha and Krishna. And the Lord was always taking care of his beloved Bhakta. Never for a moment was his Krishna away from his mind. His name was Narsi Mehta, and he was born in the town of Talaja in Gujarat. As a child, he never uttered one word. He was completely mute. People thought he was stupid or he had some type of disability. At the age of eight years old, a sadhu initiated him in the chanting of the divine names. He said, and from that moment onwards, Narsi Mehta could speak. Fair one, in the middle of the night, how your jingling anklets chime. You have woken up the whole world with melodious jingling of your anklets. Fair one, in the middle of the night, how your jingling anklets chime. Sim's parents died when he was five years old. His grandmother raised him and arranged his marriage to Manakbai. When he got married, Narsim went to go live with his elder brother named Bansindar with his wife, Gauri. Gauri was an angry woman. She felt resentful of Narsim and his wife for coming to live with them. Every day, Gauri found new reasons to add to her frustration. Gauri complained to Bansindar, Narsim, he eats her food like a pig and doesn't do anything. He's using us. He's a burden. And his wife, too. She manipulated every situation 
to express her dissatisfaction and spite. She had turned her own brother against him. Van Cinder scolded and insulted him. Narsin's peace was lost. He could not take the abuse and he left home. He went deep, deep into the forest. Around 18 miles from Junagar. Where he found a Shivalingam that he continuously prayed to. Absorbed in the love of God, Narsi Mehta prayed and meditated for seven days without eating or sleeping. Mahadev was so impressed with Narsin's dedication and absolute one-pointed focus on the Lord that he came to give him darshan and ask what he would want. Narsi only had one request. He wanted to see Radha and Krishna performing the Ras Leela in Vrindavan. This put Shiva into a predicament. He could not bring any normal person to witness the Ras Leela. But he loved his beloved Bhakta and he could not say no to him either. Shiva gave him a torch to hold so he could see the Ras Leela.
नथनी ने कारण ये तो नथनी ने कारण ये तो नित्य भरोचू ज्योति 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 नागर नंद जी नाला In the rust, the gopis' nose rings disappeared, and they blamed Krishna for stealing it. Krishna noticed Narsi standing there with his hand burning from the flames of the torch. Yet Narsi Mehta had such single-pointed devotion, he could not feel any pain. He never even flinched. His love caught the attention of Radha. Radha asked Krishna, "How can he be here, my love? He is a normal person." Yes, Krishna replied, but just like I have a place in your heart, he has a special place for me in his heart. He longs for me and loves me only for the sake of loving me. He wants nothing in return, only to love me. Radha and Krishna bless Narsi Mehta to forever chant and sing the names of the Lord. They give him cartels and a crown, and told him to spread to others what he has experienced. After this life-changing event, Narsi Mehta wrote twenty-two thousand devotional poems on the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Overfilled with joy and love, he ran back to Gauri, his sister-in-law's house, and bowed down to her. With such humility and love, he said, "Thank you, for if it wasn't for you, I would never have had the chance of this incredible experience." He was more free. To be himself and worship his beloved Krishna without any resistance from home. Yet, his free-natured spirit and how he equally treated all was scorned upon. He sang bhajans and associated with everyone, no matter the caste or sex. Causing anger in the society around him. Once, a group of pilgrims on their way to Dwarka asked to be directed to a person who could write a credit. Out of spite, they were directed to Narsi Mehta. Innocent Narsi Mehta wrote a credit for three hundred rupees. On a merchant whose name was Shamal Shah Seth, even though he did not have the money to pay for it, Narsi then composed a prayer: "O oh Bhagavan, please accept my note of credit." When the pilgrims searched for Shamal Shah Seth in Dwarka, No one had ever heard of that name. 
But suddenly, out of nowhere, it was Krishna himself that came to accept the credit and pay the debt on behalf of his beloved Bhakta. Nursi moved to Junagar, where he lived with his wife and two children in poverty. He had a son named Shamaldas and a daughter named Kunwarbai. Years went by and it was now time for his daughter Kunwarbai to get married. One day out in the market, Manikbai his wife heard local people gossiping. <laughs> it's such a disgrace how he treats his own family. Such neglect. He doesn't even take care of his own children. I know, he has completely abandoned his duty as a father. Those poor children, who would ever want to marry them? Especially with such a crazy father like that, all he does is sing all day long. He can't even provide food for them. Manikbai was in shock and deeply hurt by the words that she heard. Rage boiled up inside of her and she rushed home to see her husband. Nursing! How long do we have to go on like this? Who will arrange a suitor for our child? You think Krishna will do it without you even doing your duty? I'm sick of this. I'm sick of you. And I'm sick of your Krishna. Please, Manikbai, don't worry. I'll speak to him. Please, I'll speak to him. Have faith. Please, Lord, you know how crazy wives can be. Lord, have mercy on me, O Bhakta. You know how useless I am. Help me, Lord. Help me find a suitor for our daughter. It's your family, not mine, Krishna. She's your child. Please, Lord. It's your responsibility. I give it over to your holy feet. Please take care of it. The Lord answers Nursi Mehta's prayers. Standing at the door was a respectable family with a son that was eager to marry the beautiful daughter of Nursi Mehta. The gentleman's family brought their astrologer to review the match. According to the astrological chart, oh, it's a good match. And the best time to get married is in four days time. Four days otherwise they would have to wait one whole year. Manikbai pushed him out the house and ordered him to go get money for the wedding.
ऊचुहो जयति थेदिकम जन्मना प्रजहा श्रयत इंदिरा शश्वतत्रही Nursing comes across a priest giving kata of Srimad Bhagavatam. Immediately, from the overwhelming feeling of love and devotion in the scripture, he goes into deep bath and passes out. Radhe, Radhe. Krishna went to work collecting money for the wedding in whichever way he could even if it meant stealing from the marketplace
What day is it? Oh, where am I? Oh, the wedding. Nursey Meta woke up seven days later and missed his own daughter's wedding. It took place three days before. Why, Krishna, why do you do this to me? Oh. Oh, my wife is going to kill me. What will I do? What will I do? What will I do? I know what I'll do. I'll lie. I'll tell her that nobody could give me any money and I was too far away and then I couldn't come back. That's what I'll do. That's what I'll tell her. My bag. Always oh, my With a heavy heart, Nursi Mehta made his way back for home. As he gets closer to the village, he hears people, neighbors all around, still celebrating the marriage. It was fit for a king. Never before had they witnessed such a splendid marriage, a magnificent procession of royalty. Narsim is utterly confused. What marriage? What wedding? What is it that you're talking about? Well, your daughter's wedding, of course. My dear, a little boy came and told us that you sent all of the money with him and that you were just on the way. Papa, you did an incredible job. Thank you so much. At that moment, he realized his beloved Krishna had arranged absolutely everything in the most sumptuous way. When we are fully surrendered to the Lord, Bhagavan comes to rescue his devotees that depend on him fully, that have full faith and full love in him alone. Just like Narsim Mehta, he fully surrendered and trusted the Lord to look after his family as they were not his, but everything and everyone is Krishna's alone.
Jagudev, everybody. Jagudev Babaji, thank you for coming. It was so wonderful yeah, to see the people. Like Britkishwar was saying, you know, there is such a multi multitude of feeling watch away. Actually, this is the story of uh, nursing meta. It's so, you have seen it in a very quick version of it. Actually, it reminds what all the devotees go through. I think I have always a problem with Mike. Uh, it's not only here, <laughs> also in Europe. I was saying, <clears throat> the life of each devotee, you know, that great devotee who truly and sincerely have surrendered to the lotus feet of Krishna, like he said, I look after, I take care. And we can see in the life of Nursing Mehta, in the life of all the great saints, how those who surrender, he look after. In this play, we have seen many Leela, which uh, really, he showed what he take care of, you know, and he look after. I would just elaborate a little bit on the first part of the play when uh, somebody gave a check to Nishing Mehta. Actually, it was 700 rupees. Because that man, this businessman, when he was going to Dwarka, he didn't want to take that amount of money with him. He was scared, but on the way, he will be robbed. That's why he went to, in Junagar, he asked everybody around, whom should, can we trust that have money? And some of the people which were not happy with the uh, nursing meta, they wanted to radicalize nursing meta. They wanted to prove him that he's nobody, you know. So they sent him to the house of Nursing Meta. And of course, Nursing, when he heard that the, devo the people have sent him to him, he said, OK, fine. It is Krishna's will. If he will it like that, I will write a check. He wrote a check on Nandulal. Nandalal, you know. And then he took, the man gave him the money. So what he did, that money, he didn't even take in his hand. He left it there and he said, look, he called all the people there, said, look, there's money here, take. Do whatever you want with it. On the same day itself, he distributed all this money to all the poor people. Meanwhile, when the man, the businessman reached Dwarka, and he was looking for Nandalal uh, everywhere. Some of them said, what, Nandalal is Krishna? He's in the, in the, how say, in the temple. He said, not this one. You know, I'm looking, the partner of uh, Narsingh Mehta from Junagar. So saying that, you know, everybody said, well, we don't know any businessman here, especially a partner of uh, Narsingh Mehta from Junagar. So this man was in a very pitiable state, you know. He was crying. He was thinking, now I'm cheated. All my money is gone. <laughs> so at that moment, Krishna came in disguise, you know. He didn't come in that swarup of Krishna. He came in disguise. And then he gave all that amount to him, taking that paper. So, you see, 
when we look at the life of the saint, what he shows us, you know, is that humility. You know, even the last bhajan that we hear itself, no, Vaishnava Jana too, you know, which is so beautiful in itself if we really understand the nature of a devotee and nature of what, how we should be, you know, when we are serving him, which attitude in life we should have, you know. Often, when we are in the world, we are so much engrossed in our day-to-day -day life, you know, making money, fear about living, how to meet one end to the other. But we forget, but we are devotee of him. No? And we are not just devotee of any God. No? We are devotee of that Supreme Lord himself. Which he has given his promise, but he will look after. But for him to, to allow, for us to allow him to look after, we have to have faith in him. Not just believing in him, but we have to have faith that he is there. And as much as we focus upon him, he will take care of everything. So many saints he look after. Not only saints. If I ask each devotee, you know, like I was saying, each one of you have a story, an experience of life itself, where probably you don't realize it now. But looking back, you see, his grace was always there, whether you have known him by the name of Krishna or not. He was always there with you. When you view your life backward, you will see that there is a moment in your life where things have happened into your life where it was impossible. You are in the edge of crashing completely, but at that moment there was a force behind. There was an energy behind which was supporting you. And that is Krishna. That is the one which indwelled even before you become devotee, he have already taken you as devotee. And I think that what he called everybody, you know, all of you living your country from wherever you are, especially nowadays, some of you, it's not that easy to travel. You know. But through His grace, He has brought you here in this blessed land. You know. He has brought you here in the Sangha. You know. He has brought you here to be with this, your family, you know, the Vaishnava family itself. And that is His grace itself. You know. His grace itself is to be who you are. You know. And we should never forget about that. And that itself brought to our mind that we have to humble ourselves. You know. We have to have that attitude of love. And when we talk about love, it's beyond. Like we see, you know, the saints when they love, they don't love through etiquette, through label. People love through label. You, know, you are like this, you are so and so. You know, people like to label themselves. You, know. you can't love somebody how they are. Wherever you go into the world, there's labels everywhere. But when we talk about the love, which God has placed in our heart, when you open up your heart, that labor disappeared. Who are you loving? You're loving only Him in everybody. You're serving, you're serving Him in everyone. And that automatically makes you humble. And this is the attitude that when we call ourselves a devotee, we should cultivate you know, that attitude of humility. So that that love, His love, should flow through each one of you. His love should reflect through each one of you. 
the saint of example, they are example of that love. If that can happen to nursing Meta, that can happen to anybody. What you have to do is to surrender your mind to him. He don't want anything from you. It's just want your mind to be surrendered. And exactly what is so difficult. We are surrendering the mind everywhere, left, right, you know. We are surrendering that mind on Maya itself, you know. And then we are miserably, you know, this is the thing, you know, when we surrender the mind to Maya, we'll be miserable. That life itself has been given to attain him. Life after life, for what reason? To throw the mind into Maya, to throw yourself again into that? No, he said, surrender your mind, you know. And that is, you can be in the world, but your mind be attached to him. Narsi Mehta was a saint who was in the world itself. But his mind was attached to Krishna. It was not attached to the world. And that's what each devotee should remember. Krishna never said, but you should not do your job. No, do your job, but let your mind be upon me. That's what he want. But your mind be surrendered. If your mind can't surrender, you can't surrender. And that is the mind that we have to tame and really focus it upon. That's why he gave his name. You know. Whenever we are absorbed in chanting his name, we are absorbed into continuously remember him. And his name you can take anywhere, wherever you go. Whatever you're doing, he's there with you. I will let Babaji speak a little bit. Jai Gurudev, Baba. Jai Gurudev. Jai Jai Shri Radhe Shyam. So recently, the whole world experienced COVID. And COVID proved to everybody that nobody is independent. All the technology, all knowledge, all science, everything became futile. People were locked inside. They could not go out. And it was just a small bacteria or virus, whatever you call it, not even visible. During the COVID COVID period, a lot of people died, they faced problems, they had to go to hospital, ventilators were in shortage. There was one old man, so he also got it, then he was brought to hospital. He has to be put in a ventilator. And he was there for maybe three days on the ventilator, then he was okay. Then the go doctor gave him a bill. So the bill was about a few thousand dollars. So when he got the bill, he started crying. So the doctor thought that this man does not have the money, and that's why he's crying. So he comforted him. He said, don't cry. You can pay in installments if you don't have the money. The old man said that, no, that's not the problem. He says, I have the money to pay you, and I'll pay your bill. So then the doctor was surprised, then why are you crying? He says, I'm crying that how much I owe to God. I've been breathing all my life, and I never paid a penny for that. And here I was just three days, and a few thousand dollars bill came. <laughs> so how much compassionate is God that he's not sending the bill? <laughs> so everybody is actually dependent on God, and everybody is surrendered to God because we are part of him. We cannot be independent of him. 
It's like you have your own human body. So no part is independent. And if any part of your body wants to be independent, it becomes useless. Even the hair on your head has beauty as long as it is attached to your head. Once it is detached from there, even you don't like it. Otherwise, you spend a lot of time and money, right? Shampoo and whatever, <laughs> conditioner, this, yeah, all kinds of things, you know. But once it is detached from there, you are also detached. <laughs> so similarly, we are actually part of him, and he declares it himself by his own mouth. Mamai vamso jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. He says it very kindly and compassionately to Arjuna. But we are so stupid that we are part of such a wonderful person and we don't accept that. So actually we don't need to surrender. We have to just know that we are there. If we have to surrender, maybe we have to make some effort. <laughs> just to acknowledge it. And then everything is taken care of. Because who can you, how long can you live without breathing? Few minutes? Three, four, maybe somebody can live five minutes. And that is not under your control. If your breath goes out and does not come in, do you have some mechanism to get it inside? No. Can you pull it in? At least food you can lift with your hand. But if the air does not come in, if some problem with the lungs, they don't accept, what will you do? You die. And the heart which is pumping from the day one when you were born, it is running. And he says that I am in the heart of everybody. Sarvasya Chaham Hridi Sannivishta. I mean, who can be m closer than him to you? Even the person whom you consider your lover, your partner, is not closer to you. And at night when you sleep, you have to forget him, her, anybody. But this person remains inside you. And you actually sleep in his lap. That's why it is so nice. Every night you are reminded of him, but we don't pay attention. And without sleep, you cannot live. If you cannot sleep for two nights, you will become crazy. And sleep is not in your control. Sometimes you may have had the problem of not falling asleep. Can you do something to fall asleep? No. You cannot fall asleep by your will. You cannot wake up by your will. Although you may think that, no, no, I can wake up. No. Food... You live on food, food goes into your stomach, you have no control how to digest it. And you have no control how the energy is to be extracted from the food and to be supplied from different parts of your body. There are thousands and thousands of different types of cells in the body. They have their different requirements. And then how does your system know to extract that energy and supply to that specific cell. You know, your brain cells need some other food. Your liver cells need another type of food. So this is not happening by your arrangement or by any scientist's arrangement or any politician's arrangement. Nobody. This is by his arrangement. And everything can happen if we just accept him. It is only our pride, ego, ahankara that I am doing. So just like today I was explaining that you sit in a car and you go somewhere and then you say, oh, I traveled 200 miles. But actually you did not travel, you just sat on the seat. <laughs> you sat on the seat and you got off the seat, that's all you did. It is the car which traveled. But we take pride in, I traveled, and, if, and I'm tired. 
<laughs> and actually you didn't do anything. So like that, your soul is sitting in this body, not doing anything. And all activities are done by your senses, which we have two types, cognitive senses, working senses. And they are not yours. And one day it will be proven. It is actually proven at night when you sleep, you don't know where they are. You are not aware of your own body and senses when you are in deep sleep. And if you go into deep sleep and not come out of it, you cannot do anything. Just like sometimes people go in coma, do they have the ability to come, to come out of it? No. No, there is no science how to get them out of it. So basically we have no control over anything. But out of our misconception, pride, ahankara, we think that we are in control. So basically all we have to do is to acknowledge this reality. We are living in illusion. It's like if there is a rope, you can see the rope as a rope in the light. If there is a dim light, it look, may look like a snake. So when you see it as a snake, it is not a snake. It looks like that. But you may get scared of it. Sometimes it happens. But that is out of misconception only. It was not snake to begin with, and when you throw light, it is not snake at that time. So when you were born, you came crying. Now if somebody's life begins with crying, how wonderful is that life? Is there anybody who was born laughing? No. Is there anybody who dies laughing? So in logic, there is a principle that what is not in the beginning and what is not in the end is also not in the middle. Just like the same example of rope and snake. In the beginning, it is a rope. Then because of not enough light, it looks snake. Then you put light, it is rope. You think in between it was a snake? No. It was a rope to begin with, it is a rope in the end in between. You thought it is a snake when it was a rope. So you come crying, you go crying. And in between you think you are happy, basically not. <laughs> That's an illusion. The only person who is happy is one who accepts Krishna. Because he is the one who is happy. And anyone else in the material world is not happy. So how can you be happy by yourself or by somebody else who is also not happy? If two beggars meet together, you think they become rich? <laughs> so people are so stupid. They are miserable by themselves. Then they find another person and they think, then they become more miserable. They don't say it. Everybody knows this. That's why in the thing who was saying that marriage thing some <laughs> sta some statement came about marriage <laughs> that's true that's why swamiji did not get married you know <laughs> he's smart <laughs> he knew from his childhood <laughs> so we have of course i'm not saying that you don't get married please you can remain. <laughs> but the point is that we have to acknowledge that we are not independent and we cannot live without God, we cannot live without Krishna. But he is so compassionate that he does not force himself. Just like you saw in the play that he stole or whatever he did, but he did not tell this to him. He, when he woke up, he did not know what happened to my bag. <laughs> so, because he's not interested in take, getting some praise or some credit for this. He's, this is the meaning of causeless compassion. Unconditional love. He's not putting any conditions. But we are so ungrateful that we don't want to acknowledge this. So, we have to just learn this much and then your life will be happy.
without accepting and acknowledging god there is nobody who can be happy there was nobody who was happy there is nobody who will be happy whether you like it or you don't like it whether you accept it or you don't accept it but this is the truth and krishna comes here for this reason only this is vrindavan this is his home this is where he lives he is still here he has not gone anywhere and you are all very fortunate that you have come to his home by the grace of swami ji because the only way you can come to vrindavan is through bhakti marg bhakti is the only one which leads to krishna bhakti ayam bhakti amam bhi janati yavan yascha tatvata bhakti ayam ek ya grahi hai so bhakti is the only process and everybody is looking for bhakti bhakti means love there is nobody who can live happy without love there is no love there is no happiness without love so even those people who do not believe in god they are want love but they cannot get it because you can only only get something where it exists you can only get water from a well or a pond or a lake you cannot get it from desert so love is krishna and it is available from him only and it comes through his devotees and this is his place so you are fortunate to be here so imbibe this and put it into practice in your life jai gurudev thank you very much baba ji what is the program now finish jai gurudev everyone